That was phase two. Right? Yeah, that was phase two. Phase three, switch case. So there are, there are basically two different ways um, that a, a switch case can show up. Well, first of all, for those who aren't familiar with C, when we say switch case, it is like this, switch um, some variable, I don't know, i, um, and then case, oh boy, this has been a while, uh, 20, um, and we do print out. It is 20. Um, wow, it's been a while since I've done this break, right? And case, uh, 142. Print out. Uh, it is not 20. Break. And then you can have more stuff. Um, and then you have a, a default that if it's not any of those, you do print out um, those. So something like that. Um, and this is this is your your basic you know in i and then some stuff fills in i. So this is your your basic kind of. Ooh, this is your basic switch statement. Um, it's just a another way. You can look at it as just another way of doing a bunch of uh, like if else kind of stuff. And that is actually one of the representations you're going to see in assembly. It looks a lot like a if else if else if else if else. Um, where it, you'll see that it's doing the comparison if it, uh, and you'll see the, the conditional jump, and if it's successful, um, or yeah, if it's successful, it'll go to a particular code in a uh, particular block that does that. If it's unsuccessful, it'll go on to the next if comparison, rather. Um, it'll test the next value, and if it's successful, it'll jump to a block that does that. If it's not successful, it'll go to the next conditional, um, and that's one one way. Another way is using what's called a jump table. And with this, it, it depends on your compiler, and it also depends on the actual values that are within the switch statement. If it's something that it could uh, can easily turn into, well, can easily throw into a table um, and based off of the uh, input can do jumps into that uh, table, then it will use this syntax. What this basically does in memory is it, it sets up a table of this value, like, here, let me go back to the, uh, back to here. This value, it sets up an array. This value, um, uh, will point to to uh, this uh, whatever this block of code that address is. This value uh, will point to this block of code, the beginning of that, and so on. Uh, it's just a, a another way for it to to do that um, jumping, and you see the jump is basically like a it, it's it's a jump based off of the array value, and that is the jump table table or, or array table is just uh, another name for an array. So this is something to look out for. In, in. Um, <laughs> determining analysis scope. So this is one of the, the artful things about reverse engineering, there are rabbit holes that you can go down that you end up spending lots of time on. Just a, um, not, not warning, but just a, a heads up. Try to, to keep an eye on you know, what 
what are what am I looking for here? Because um, you could there are certain parts in the code that you can just kind of keep diving down that doesn't necessarily get you to where you want to go. Um, so try to keep an eye on, on the big picture of, okay, what is, what is happening within the scope of the function that I really want to find out, um, and not necessarily what is every single function that is being called doing. So just as a heads up there. Um, so the switch case, that's, that's basically going to be what you're, you're working on. Um, be aware of that. One way I, I will mention, well, no, I'll, I'll do that in the review. There's a way to recognize these things using just kind of what does the graph look like, um, but I'll go into that in the review. Um, any questions about dealing with switch statements in either of their formats right now? Okay. Uh, in that case, let me see, hold on. Let me see how much time I want to give you for this. Oh yeah, we're way ahead of schedule. Um, how about work on it for? I'll try twenty minutes. See see how far you can get in twenty minutes. 